before we begin, I'll just give you a little background about this particular webinar series. So we're going to uh, talk about Mask Pro uh, for landscape photography. And it's a, this is actually going to be a pretty short webinar. I only, we're only going to work on three images. I've got right here three images that I selected for today. We did a Mask Pro series a while ago, and we tried to cover a lot in the hour. And the feedback that I saw was um, it's, there's just too much. Because Mask Pro conceptually can be a bit heady. Um, and so I rejiggered it. And I'm like, I thought the best thing to do is to break this up into a series, like a multi-part series, maybe two or three parts. Today will be, like any series, we'll start at the beginning. Um, so we'll just discuss masking in general because there are a lot of people who do not feel comfortable with the concept of masking. Um, and then we'll illustrate how you can mask in Photoshop, but then what the differences with between Photoshop and Mask Pro are. Uh, and then we'll just use these three examples. Part of what I want to get out of this is to show you how to use Mask Pro, but also to give you ideas so when you're out in the field and you're shooting, uh, the you know one of the biggest creativity sucks out there is when you're out, you know, oh, you know, you finally have a free day uh, if you're you know if you're not a full-time photographer, and you, you know you have a free day, you go out to shoot and the weather is just you know crap. It's not very good. Uh, you have a gray sky or, or just whatever the case may be. Um, that, that really can take a lot of um, energy out. But what I'm hoping this series helps uh, get you guys thinking about is the alternatives. You know, knowing what tools you have at your disposal uh, at home so that you can still go out, have a good time, and know that you can kind of salvage the shot. So let's go into Photoshop and bring our, f our first image in. And you'll find that... Um, for those of you that are familiar with Mask Pro or masking, this might be a little bit slow, but I'd rather uh, cover all bases here. That's just kind of how I want to attack it today. So this is the one of those cases um, where, you know, this could be the kind of shot where you go on vacation, you go somewhere out to the, this looks like this was taken uh, out in the southwest. And I think this was taken by my colleague Dan Harlicker, who's our uh, senior product manager. Uh, and I believe this is his shot. So I don't want to give 100% accreditation to him, but I think it is. And you go out on vacation, and this happens. I'm sure this has happened to just about everyone on the, on this uh, webinar, where the weather doesn't comply. And it's a bummer, because you can't control the weather. But you also don't want to just, you know, unless it's pouring rain or it's, you know, some major act of God, you, you're not going to stay in your hotel room. You're going to go out and you're going to shoot. And what I, the point I want to make is, knowing the tools that you have at your disposal. So if you have Mask Pro at home, you know that, all right, we have this uh, range over here with some complex shapes. Now, the concept of masking is you have your image on its layer, and you know that you want to get rid of this sky. The sky is very boring. So what you can do is you can mask out this portion of the image and replace it with something else on a layer below. So you can see right here I've got in Photoshop my layer palette. And I have, I've already pre-built this. We have our original layer here and then we have below it this sky. And you can see it's nothing really, uh, it's not like this, the sky was cut out perfectly. You can see that it was taken in some little village somewhere. So what I've done is if you if I drop the opacity of this layer, I'm going to drop it so you can see through the top layer and see the bottom layer. What we want to do is punch through the sky and rev or through this uh, the original sky and show this kind of sunset sky. Now it helps to kind of be a little to have some insight or some foresight to your image. What I mean by that is this image you can see was taken probably towards the end of the day, right around golden hour. And so you kind of want to match up whatever you're going to mask in. You know, it would not m look very realistic if you put a, you know, a bright blue sky over here because your foreground doesn't have the, the proper illumination. If you put this big cheery sky, it wouldn't make sense that all of this would be in shade and you would have this kind of warm t 
tone in the rock face. This is looking like the sun is starting to set, and it's just you know a very overcast day. So you go out and you find a shot, and whether you go out and you buy stock shots, um, this it's very popular for people to just go to some micro stock agencies and just buy stock shots of clouds. What I've turned to do, and I'll show you in, in some of the other images, is if I'm out shooting. Uh, and I, it just happens to be that there's a really nice sky with some. Ni what I mean by nice sky for me, for me, and, and you know my wife and my friends, you know I, they've heard me say this a thousand times. You know, a lot of times you go out shooting and you have a beautiful blue sky. It's just perfectly blue, and this people this makes people happy. For me, that's that's the kiss of death. I can't. I, it just any solid color just ruins it for me. Uh, because it's just there. It's just a big, solid color. It's a great weather, but not necessarily very uh, appealing photography. So when I'm out shooting and I see clouds uh, with a blue sky, you know, nice clouds, I'll do one of two things. First, I'll either take my camera and I'll just, we'll just go back to this material, I'll just shoot the sky. I, I'll put my lens up so that there's nothing in the, in the frame except for the sky with the clouds. Another thing that I'll do is um, I'll, sometimes I'll put a, a neutral density filter on my lens. What a neutral density filter is, picture, uh, think of sunglasses for your lens. It's like a dark piece of glass that sits on top of your lens. And what this does is it causes you to have a longer exposure. Um, this helps a lot if there's a very bright scene. Um, but what it does as well is if you have a very, very thick neutral density filter, like a 10-stop neutral density filter, you can also shoot the sky. So normally, let's say you to, to get a shot of a sky with clouds, you only would need you know one one thousandth of a second if it's in the middle of the day. Um, with a neutral density filter, you know that can be as long as you know ten seconds. And what that does is it create it captures the movement of the clouds, and so you get that really nice wispy. If you've ever seen those images of of you know landscapes where the clouds are just kind of moving. That's, that can either be that they use a neutral density filter or they just use the radial blur in Photoshop to, uh, to kind of simulate that look. So let's go here and let's just explain what masking is. You can see again, I've got my original layer and my sky layer below it. Between it, separating it here, is this layer mask. It's this, just a white box and you can create that by clicking on this layer mask icon. I'll, I'll zoom in at the bottom here. Um, that's your layer mask icon the little rectangle with the uh, white circle in the middle of it. And that This is in Photoshop. And I'm using Photoshop CS5. So right at the, the kind of standard way to layer mask is you select your paintbrush, which is this icon right here, or you can select, uh, hit B on your keyboard. And then you have your foreground color is black. Black will actually reveal the layer underneath. So watch, as I start drawing, uh, oh, my opacity of my brush has to be 100%. We're starting to reveal the sky underneath. It's it's pretty cool. The problem is that we have a lot of kind of complex shapes. Um, and so if you start drawing or you try to make a selection around here, you might not get it. And what you end up doing is kind of painting out areas of the sky or the foreground. And again, this is we're starting very basic here. I know that there's other things you can do, but I want to kind of give you a nice gradual introduction to Mask Pro and to masking. So let's go here and let's bring the image back to its original setting. Let me bring this up to 100%. What we can do is um, let's uh, bring the, this image here into Mask Pro. The way I like to work with Mask Pro is I like to have my layer mask selected. The reason why I have my layer mask selected is because when I do my work in Mask Pro, the mask will apply directly onto the layer mask and not to the image. Now there are several ways that you can get into Mask Pro. You can get to it either by using an on-one palette, and I've seen this happen sometimes, and I want to illustrate this to you. Sometimes if you have your on-one palette, some of the programs are missing. A lot of times what I'll do is I'll just select a different tab and then uh, go back to the on one palette and they'll come back. But if you have your on one palette kind of sitting outside like this and you are missing some of the apps, all you need to do is toggle the window. And you can do that by going to Window, 
extensions and selecting on one. That'll turn it off. And by going back, it'll turn it back on. I just like to have my on one palette docked in uh, you know another frame so that it's it's more economical with my uh, screen real estate. So we've got Mask Pro here, and if you double click it, it'll launch Mask Pro. But if you single click it, you'll have three different options. And this is where my series is going to start building. Right now, we're just going to work with Mask Pro, but we'll work with these other selections here. I just don't want to overwhelm anyone. Um, I'd rather go slower and give opportunities down the line to have different sessions than throw too much at you in an hour and cause more confusion. That is the complete opposite direction that I want to take. So again, we're going to be going into Mask Pro. You can double click Mask Pro here in the On One palette, or you can go to File, Automate, and then you'll have all of the products from the Perfect Photo Suite listed. And so you can just go to Mask Pro. So I'm launching Mask Pro, and again, we're going from the layer mask. So here's our window. The first thing that I like to do in Mask Pro, uh, and for those of you that may have attended the Mask Pro for Portrait Photography, this is some of this stuff is similar. I, I, um, some things are kind of universal, the steps I take in Mask Pro, and one of them is going to Window and Zoom Window. And what that does is it puts the image on a white background, because you can see if we go to if we kind of just kind of have this window here, we've got all these other toolbars and palettes from Photoshop, which can be distracting. And when I'm working on an image, I like to kind of have as minimize my distractions. So by going to Window, Zoom Window, we could do that. Um, but for now, I want to show you basically. Um, I'm gonna, let me actually relaunch Mask Pro because I want to put the window on a, on a white background. So if we go to Window and Zoom Window, again, here's the image. And now we have no backgrounds. We can zoom in and zoom out of the image using the same shortcut keys in Photoshop. So if you're familiar with Photoshop uh, shortcut keys, to zoom in and zoom out on the Mac, you'd hit Command Plus and Command Minus. So Command Plus, Command Minus. On Windows, it's Control Plus and Control Minus, and that works the same way in Mask Pro. So you can zoom in and zoom out. So you remember in, Ma in Photoshop, when I was masking, I just had a brush and I was just drawing. With Mask Pro, the primary difference of how you're going to mask in Mask Pro is you're going to use color as your bias. You're going to select colors that you want to protect and colors that you want to remove. The colors that you want to protect, we call them keep colors, which you can see here in this keep palette. The colors we'll remove are called drop colors, and we'll, they'll be in this drop palette here. Now, how do you select the colors? Well, we've got these two on our on one uh, toolbar here. We've got two droplets at the very top, these eyedroppers. The left one is your keep color dropper. The right one is your drop dropper color. So what we would do is we first want to, and by keep and drop it, uh, what I mean is I want to protect all the colors along this uh, ridge over here. That's my edge. That's what I want to remain sharp. What I want to remove are the colors in the sky because it's a boring sky. So what I'm going to do is when I select my colors, I'm going to, I like to zoom in and get a good range. Now, one of the pretty much predictable questions that I always get. I get this asked at trade shows. I get, uh, you know, anytime we talk about Mask Pro, the question I get asked is how many colors should I select? And really the best answer is kind of the minimum amount. And I'll explain why once we start masking. You can see as I'm selecting um, colors, they're adding to this palette. And you can see that for the most part, it's this kind of earth tony hue, which is good. That's what we want to protect. But you want to be cognizant of the fact that there are different shades of it. It's not just one flat shade. The same can be uh, said about the sky. The sky has varying shades of gray. So when you're happy with your selection, and again, I'm only focusing on the edge. I'm not focusing on all this stuff over here because we're not masking that out, at least not yet. And not yet. I'll come back to that in a minute. So now that we've got our keep colors, let's select our drop colors. So I'm going to switch to my drop, 
Um, and you, the hotkeys, if you want to, um, a good way to kind of think about how to look at keep and drop colors, the, the keyboard shortcuts for these droppers are I for the keep and O for the drop which are right next to each other. And the way I like to explain it is I is for in, or you know, like it, these colors are in, O is for out. So these colors are out, they're gone. So you could see I, O, I'm just kind of switching back and forth. Um, so now that we have our drop colors, um, <clears throat> I'm gonna start selecting different colors of the sky. I'm just gonna pan around, and that's good. All right, so look at what we have here. We have a palette of colors we're protecting compared to a palette of colors that we're going to get rid of. They're pretty distinct. Now, not even pulling any punches. This is a very easy example. This is a good starter for Mask Pro for people who are not familiar because you've got a clear contrast. So it's, the color difference is very, very distinct between your foreground and your background. And this was intentional. We will, in the more intermediate and advanced series, I will show you how you can, if the color, let's say this was uh, a more of an amber sky, like almost like a sunset where the colors were similar. I will show you, we'll go into how you could fake out the colors to kind of create a, an artificial uh, change in color. But I don't want to start with that yet. So when you have your keep and your drop colors, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to use this magic brush. The magic brush, I'll zoom into the control panels so you can see. It's a little, a little brush here with some little sparklies around it. It's very magical. And we're going to zoom out. Actually, while I'm in here, when I select the magic brush, you'll notice on the bottom here there are three options. Each option has does something different. This option here that has the transparency, the little checkers, that is going to remove. So the magic brush will only remove stuff when you click on it, or if you hit X, X will toggle these. When you hit X, or these little, this little arrow up here, you'll go to this top option, which is Restore. This means that the magic brush will only paint stuff in. So again, painting out, painting in, and this one in the middle does both at the same time. You would think this would be the one to use, but no. In reality, pretty much 99% of the time when I'm using the magic brush, I am removing. And it should make sense. We're removing things. I don't want to put anything back. I just want to remove the sky. So how does the magic brush work? Let me just zoom back out to full screen view. The magic brush works by comparing. As I start drawing, it's comparing actively the colors that I want to protect and the colors I want to drop. So when I start drawing, it's seeing, okay, I, I'm in my circle here, in my brush circle, I'm seeing some of these hues. I don't want to remove them, but I'm seeing some of these grays. I want to get rid of those. Now, earlier I said, you know, how many colors should I select? And I said, you know, the minimum. The more colors that you put in your keep and drop uh, dropper, the longer it's going to take for the brush to start calculating. That should make sense because um, you're feeding it more information, so it has more data to work with, but it slows it down. So what we can start doing right now is just start drawing. And I'm just drawing along the edge, and you can see how it's retaining all of the rock face, all of those complex edges. Nothing is getting uh, removed. I could draw right through it. And I don't try to make it a habit of drawing too far in. I try to keep the edge of, this, of my brush at the edge of the uh, foreground and background. So you can see as I'm drawing through, I'm just kind of going around here. Now, this is one view. When you're masking, we have uh, several different views. This view is showing you a transparent background, with, and the transparent background is represented by this checkered area. If you want to see your background, so in this case, that sunset sky, while you're drawing, you can go to View, then Mode, and then go to Composite. And you can see next to each of these options, there is a number. So these are your short, your keyboard shortcuts. So watch, we can do one, which just puts it on a solid white background. Two, gives us our transparency. Three, puts us into mask view. So this is the actual mask um, that 
uh, we are creating. And I'll go, when we're done with the mask itself, I'll go into what this means right here. Four gives you what's called a cleanup view. In, if I can be so bold, I can. I will say that four, this cleanup view, is the is absolutely useless. I don't like it. I never ever use it. It will drive you mad. If you want to get a good view, I go to three for a mask. But the one that I that is probably most um, helpful is five, which is your composite. So here you've got your original image, and you've got you're starting to see the sky under the from the layer below and so what we can do is we can start working on drawing right through and you can see this is actually really doing a really nice job I could just draw right through let me move the keep palette and just kind of go along the edge here and now we've got the the hardest part of our job is done we've gone through all of the edges now let's take care of the rest of the image so what I can do for the rest of the image to get rid of the rest of the sky is this is what I do a lot also. Next to the magic brush is, oh, let me zoom in so you can see, is this flat brush. So I'm going to select that. It's just like the magic brush, except it does not analyze anything. Keep and drop is not even looked at. All it does is it looks at this option here. Am I removing or am I restoring? Am I painting out or am I painting in? So. We're going to paint out just like we did before. Let's go back to our full screen view. And what I'll do is I'm just going to draw an outline. So you see this, I almost have another outline over here. With my brush, I'm just going to draw a quick outline of what I just masked. And you don't have to be very, um, you don't have to be very specific. I'm just kind of going through. And I, I'm using a, a Wacom tablet. I have an Intuos 4 tablet. And it just makes it for me a lot easier to just draw. All right, so let's zoom out of the image so we can see the whole thing. Oh, and you can see I actually missed this part, so I'll just go back to my magic brush and just draw it through. So let me finish that outline. Now that I made the outline, I can go to this bucket tool. So I'm just going to zoom in so you can see. This, this bu there's a magic bucket, but I'm going to use the flat bucket. And so let's zoom back out. And I'm just going to drop the bucket over here, anywhere in the gray. And voila, we filled in the rest of the image. Now, what a, before I actually finish my work, what I like to do is zoom in using the Command Plus key. And just to see, um, I like to look at the edges here. And you can see we've got some, you, if you look, let's go in even closer. Can you, you guys should be able to see this uh, area here. It's, we still have some of that missing parts. There are a few things you can do. One thing that I can do is, you notice right here, there's a, it almost looks like there's a little glow. Let me zoom in just a little bit more so you can see. We have a little bit of a remnant. I just want to make sure the screen catches up. Okay, almost like a, a slight glow. Now this is something that you want to get in the habit of, is being meticulous. Uh, of the mask that you're going to create because if there's one if you're going to go down this road this is just my my you know my adage of masking if you're going to go down the road of masking meaning you're artificially changing your image you're taking uh, an element that was in your original image you're removing it and restoring it with something else make it presentable make it believable because the last thing you want to do is have a sloppy mask that screams hey i don't know what i'm doing i'm trying to just put this this sky was not here one of the best ways to kind of fix this is using what we have called a magic chisel. And I'll, let me zoom in just again so you, you see the tool I'm using. You can see it looks like a little chisel that's kind of chiseling away. So I'm going to zoom out. And what the chisel does is, I'm just going to use a small brush, um, is it just shaves off the outer pixel edge. And so all I do is just kind of quickly, just really if you zoom out, you can kind of see that haze going away. And just quick, quick strokes, and all that little section of color that was there is gone. And I, I'll do this for the outline. I'll just kind of, just quickly. And and one point I want to make again: I'm using this remove mode. I'm not in the restore mode. When you select the tool, here's a good kind of a workflow for Mask Pro. As soon as you select your tool, before you start doing anything, 
look down and see what mode you're in. Way too many times have I gone into Mask Pro, select the tool, and I just start drawing, and I'm in restore mode. Now, it's no big deal because you can just go to edit and then undo stroke. It's not that big of a deal, but it's just kind of like, especially if you're someone who runs a webinar program and is demoing the product, and you actually restore instead of remove. So that's kind of the lesson. And I'll, you know, some areas don't really need it. Some of the edges here are pretty clean as is, but I just kind of like to outline them. And it does a nice job of creating a very seamless transition. It looks very natural. Um, so just be careful. The more you do it, you can see the more I'm doing it here, it literally shaves in. So I'm getting rid of the rock face. So we can just kind of undo that. And that's why I was saying I do these kind of broad strokes, just kind of like w wisping strokes at the edges. And it does have edge detection. It's not going inside the rock. Even though the um, brush is inside the rock, it's, it knows where the edge is. It's actually a very sophisticated tool. So let's zoom out here to see the whole image. Here's our image, and here was our original. The way I toggle the original and the preview is I use the tilde key. So the tilde is typically to the left of the number one key. It has a little squiggle, or it's a, a reverse apostrophe. Just hitting that. Now I could I could have gone through and just kind of chiseled all this, but I don't want to spend that much time. When I'm done, I'm going to go to File, Save, and Apply. And what it's going to do is it's going to build the mask. You can see now we have our mask. Now. Um, one of the, I was saying how if um, if you didn't use the chisel tool and you have that kind of clear transition, it kind of screams, "Hey, I I made I doctored this image up." And we you can see I can actually see right over here um, along this edge. There's a slight glow if I zoom in. You can see I just didn't use the chisel tool right here. but I can fix that later. I can go back into Mask Pro. The point is, that's one way that screams artificiality. The other is not really following through with your image. So you, we have a nice sky here, but we have a reflective uh, stream in our foreground. Water is reflective, glass is reflective, leather jackets are reflective. Uh, you know, Anything that reflects, uh, you want to be consistent with. So what I mean by that is I have my layer here, my uh, sky layer. What I want to do is, actually what I'll do is I'm going to delete this layer, and I'll show you exactly what to do. I'm going to take my sky layer, and I need to make sure that it, it's actually reflecting in the water. To do that, I can hit Command or Control J, and that duplicates my layer. Or I can, if I want, I can just take this layer and drag it to the New Layer button next to the trash can. It does the same thing. Now I have a sky layer copy. So I can say sky 1 and then sky 2. All right. And you can see if I hide this selection and I take my move tool, we have two skies. You can see it right here. The first thing that I'm going to want to do, though, is um, go into free transform mode, just to make it smaller. To go to free tr transform mode, I'll go to edit, free transform, or you can hit command or control T, and then I'm just going to just squeeze it down, just so it fits on the frame. When I'm done with that, I'm going to hit enter, or I'm going to hit this checkbox to commit the free transform. Now. We can position it, and then if you want, we can also, what I like to do is I'll turn my original layer on like I did at the beginning. I'll drop the opacity so I can see kind of where the clouds are. Now, here's something that you have to understand with reflections. Reflections are inverted. So <laughs> you can take there's there are things you have to think about when you if you're going to go down this path you want to be consistent. 
a reflection is an, an inversion of the original uh, element that's being reflected. So if you were to put this sky over here and then just start putting it in a stream, it's good. You're, you're definitely taking the right step, but you're missing a key part. What I mean by that is we're going to go to our sky image here. Let's turn this one off and turn that one off. We'll go to edit, transform, not free transform, but transform, and then flip vertical. So now we have an inversion. Our sky is upside down. So if you see here, if we turn our water on, the sky is properly reflected. And then we can go to our original image here, bring the opacity up to 100 so we see the full layer. And then we go to our mask over here. We're not going to go into Mask Pro for this. We don't need Mask Pro. All we're going to do is select our brush tool, which is the uh, below the healing brush, or you can hit B on your keyboard. We're going to make sure black is selected as our foreground so that we reveal. And then we're going to drop the opacity of our brush. It's at the top here. We'll make it really, 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 really low opacity, like 10%. And then we're just going to, with a big fat brush, just kind of draw. Actually, I want to undo. The point I want to make is we're going to do, draw in single strokes. And so just kind of right through here and fill it in. And the reason why we want to do single strokes is because if I keep doing strokes like this, you see how it's compounding on top of each other, but it's not even. See, it just kind of, you can see the brush strokes. We don't want that. So let me go to my history and undo. Okay, we want to go in solid strokes. So again, we'll do it again. We'll cover the whole uh, bottom foreground and just kind of get, and I'm just being sloppy with my drawings. I don't want to, normally I'd definitely spend more time making sure that I get to the edge. But you can see now that we're getting a nice reflection in the water. It's looking more realistic. Um, and so here we now have our original image. So if we disable the layer mask, that was our original image. And just, you know, by doing a few things we have a much nicer image. It's much more pleasing. And you could have, we could have even, if this is too um, opaque for you, like it's just too clear, you could drop the opacity even more. You could, there are various things you can do. So you can actually, I think if we go here and drop the opacity of the layer, no, we don't actually want to do that. Keep the layer 100%, scratch that. Um, but the, probably the best thing to do is just drop the opacity of the brush and, um, and it'll be even more subtle. So that's the first very basic example of Mask Pro. I'm going to close out of this image here and we'll go on to the next one. Actually, that I was glad that I didn't have too many images because that actually took a decent amount of time. Um, let's go, let me see what this one is. All right, this image here, this one I'll go a little bit faster through. Um, but there's a lesson to it. So I took this image um, in Old Orchard Beach in Maine. And th they have these, uh, s these kind of storefronts on these uh, wooden beams that go right up until the ocean. And remember earlier I was saying how kind of blue skies just ruin it for me. Um, now this isn't even that bad because there are some wisps of, of clouds, but I kind of want more of uh, a cloudy sky. And so I was saying earlier how when I go out, I shoot skies. And I shot this image. This was I was in Boston. I was just shooting around, and we just happened to have a really nice day. Of this to me, this is an awesome sky because it's very, very character. There's a lot of character to it. It's dynamic. The clouds are constantly sh uh, moving, so it's really good. And so just like before, what we have is we've got our foreground layer, we've got our sky on its own layer, and it's separated by a layer mask. So the what I want to do is go into Mask Pro. So we can just go to File, Automate, Mask Pro. And I'll show you how I attack this image. The lesson for this image is working in sets of colors. So let's go to Window, Zoom Window. And I'll explain, this gives me the opportunity to explain what a set of colors is. But the first thing I want to do before I do anything is get rid of the majority of the sky. To do that, you remember how last time I outlined my mask? In situations like this, where it's almost like a rectangle of open sky, what I can do is just kind of 
again, I'm in re remove mode. I'm going to select, just draw a dot right here. And I'm going to go to the other side, and I'm, I'm holding. What I'm doing is I'm holding my shift key down. So if you could see me right now, my fingers on the shift key, and I'm going to click, and it just draws a straight line. It connects the dots. That's what shift does. So you can go here, you know, shift, 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 shift. But I don't want that. I just want that one vertical line. Now, with this border that I created, I'm going to go to my bucket tool. And before I do that, there was a question earlier as to at the bottom here. Let me zoom in because it's kind of very hard to see. You see these little buttons here? These are the same. Uh, these are the graphical representations of this. When I go to view mode and the one through five, these are the same buttons. So if you don't want to go to the, if you don't want to hit one through five. You want to see what the modes are? These are. This is it. You can click here. That's our mask. The one I want is five. The composite. And so now that I created this border with the bucket tool, I just drag right here, and I have the sky already done. So now we're starting to see what we can do. And now I can start attacking this complex area with all these shapes. It would be unrealistic for me to be able to draw through, especially through here. It would take forever for you in Photoshop to try to make selections or draw through these little notches. So I'm going to attack this top part first. And again, what I'm going to do is I'll zoom in and I'll just kind of start selecting. Let me move this out of the way here. I'll start co selecting colors that I want to keep. So just, and again, it's along the edge. Just kind of here, here, the little camera, the chrome, the roof and that's all I'm doing I'm just kinda quickly doing a rough selection okay the colors I want to drop will be these sky colors okay now again magic brush time I'll zoom out so you can see I'm just gonna start drawing and just kinda follow through and get right through this the security camera stays intact that would be pretty much impossible you wouldn't be able to do that with Photoshop and you wouldn't be able to make uh, it would be really difficult to make a selection that complex through that uh, through all the little uh, pieces of metal so I'm just drawing right through and kind of connecting the dots and this is kind of the um, the not so fun part of Mask Pro is watching me draw because you know how exciting can this possibly be but it's illustrating to you how Mask Pro does an, such a nice job of handling edges edges are the kind of the bane of my existence when I mask because you always you know you're worried you're gonna cut into it um, especially with portraits when you're dealing with fine hair oh so now here's kind of something I want to show you I don't know if you'll be able to see this um, on the screen. If we zoom in, you should be able to see it. But there's this kind of, there's a, let me move the, the um, toolbar out. You kind of see there's a, a, a fade in between here and here. If I go to three, which is my mask view, anything that's kind of gray, that means that Mask Pro, it is, it's remnant from the original image. Also, you can see that if we go back to five, there's certain swatches that I didn't hit. So if we go to three, anything white, we want this top part to be black. And you can see there are a few areas that we need to refine. So what I can do is with a, um, I can either select my drop dropper and just kind of, wherever there's that gray, I'll just select the drop dropper. And now with the magic brush, I can go in and keep refining. So it's doing, you can see how it's picking up more of the gray. And if I really want to obliterate it, I can just go to the, flat brush in remove and now with a just kind of get a brush and just make it pure black I can go here let me just make sure that's let me put my cursor over it okay that's sky so I don't want that I, I want to get rid of that and just these little white dots but look look at the, how cool that that mask is right here of the security camera I mean it's it's actually done a really nice job so let's zoom out you know we can also get right here and then also over here, just kind of seal the deal there. And we'll go back to five, which is 
with our composite view and we'll zoom out. Now, we've got the top part of the image here, but we still have this bottom part. That's where I work in, um, in sets of colors. So a set of colors is represented by this bar on the left. It's, got a, it's a gray bar with a little circle in the middle. We can create new sets of colors. And you do that by, if I zoom in here, to create a new set, you can hit that button right there. And it creates a new, so you could see a new bar with a new circle. And I can do that in the keep and the drop. Let me, uh, what this allows me to do is now, with my keep and drop, I can select colors that I want to keep. So really, the only colors that I want to keep are the colors of the pe these uh, beams. Actually, I'm, I'll zoom in with the actual zoom tool, not with my screen zoom. So that's what I want to keep. You can see now, as I'm selecting keep, it's going to this set. I'll select a little bit of the ocean water. Um, and then just because there's a little bit of shadow here, I'll just get those colors as well. And the same thing for drop. If we zoom out, you can see that. Let's go to our original image. You can see that the sky up here is bluer than the sky down here. This is almost a little bit, uh, uh, a little more yellow. And this is why I, when I work with masking, I work in sets of colors. I could, I, I could have added these colors to my original set, but it would have made it that much slower. The benefit of working in sets of colors is, watch. Oh, let me just select my um, drop colors. Now that I have a separate set of keep and drop colors, I can go to my first set. And just by clicking in the column, I just click anywhere, it'll go from gray to white. And I'll turn them off. That's what I'm, oh, I turn the second one off here. I want to turn the first one off here. Now notice, we have far fewer colors in our keep and our drop. What this translates to is faster masking. There's less than the, that, that the magic brush has to, uh, to calculate. So I can take my brush here and watch. I just paint right through. Oh, I need to turn my actual mask on. There. I paint right through. And look at that. I mean, we're retaining all that information. And I get to paint right through all the columns. I mean, it makes it so much easier to do a mask. And there. I mean, now we have, you know, a cooler image, in my opinion. I mean, you have a nice kind of uh, huge, big sky. Um, now, you can do, there are several things that we could have done here. We could angle the sky. We could have changed the perspective so it almost uh, matches the um, perspective of the foreground. But I like this anyway. This kind of, this, um, you know, it just something about it. It's like, ah, you know, big day. So let's go to File and Save Apply because we are not done yet. We still have the foreground. And so all I'm going to do is, because the foreground is reflective, I'm going to drag my sky layer to its own layer here. We can drop the opacity of this layer so we see it. And again, select the copy. Oops. Go to Image or Edit, Transform, and then flip vertical so it's upside down. And then we'll select the V tool, which is our move tool. It's the first uh, tool on your toolbar, and just drag it down. And you could drag it pretty much anywhere you want. So in this case, I'm just going to drag it at the horizon line. Oops, move that over. OK. Now we've got our sky in place. We'll go to our foreground, bring it to 100%. And just like before, we select the layer mask, go to our paintbrush, and then with a really low opacity and a fat brush, just kind of draw strokes. Again, one more. We'll do it. So we kind of have um, the clouds in the water. You can actually see them right here. This part here is reflected right over here. It's very cool. It's very accurate. Um, so that's kind of what you want to look through, um, is being consistent there. And you can go, you can go to town with consistency. Um, in terms of if you want to mask in some of the 
like anything that's reflective, like any glass doors or anything. I see that there was a, a, con a question in there about the, you could easily just kind of draw very, very um, quickly onto the glass because the glass is reflective. That's a very good point. So when you're done, you can see we can just kind of disable the mask. You know, some to some people this is a better image, and that's great. You know, absolutely. Um, to, that's why I love photography. Is you know, it's totally subjective. For me, I I just kind of like I like this a little bit better. And I can go through here. I can go to the sky layer, and I could um, go to image adjustments. Let's see, we go to brightness contrast drop the brightness of it a little bit you know we could boost the contrast and it's only affecting the sky you know so now we have an even you know more contrast here um, sky we can also with I mean there are any there's a bunch of things we can do so that's kind of how you can work with masks it's it's the <laughs> I guess if, if there's a way to kind of boil it down for this uh, um, series, the whole point that we're trying to make is we want to create that. We want a complex mask. That's all we care about. What the mask dictates is what is shown from this layer to that layer and that layer. That's all we care about is this. We're not actually doing anything to the image itself. We're just kind of creating some sort of a cutout, a very complex cutout. That's what Mask Pro is about, or at, at its core, that's what it's about. Um, there's a quick question here about if I can show the sets of colors. Absolutely. We'll go back into Mask Pro and um, Windows and Window. All right. So. We'll go to the original image. Oh, I'm, uh, this, I see here. I'm actually, all right. So that when I was masking, I treated I I masked this top part of the structure with a separate set of colors. You can see here are the colors from the top part of the building. From the top, from the first color here, up until this line. That's one set of colors. The same thing with my drop colors. So these are the colors of the sky that I wanted to remove. I then wanted to tackle this bottom part separately. I want I, I, the keep and drop colors up here are totally different than the keep and drop colors down here. And so to speed things up with processing, what I can do is I can create different sets of colors. And you, you, if I did not turn this off, these two sets, okay, here's actually, this is a good example. If both of these sets were on, Mask Pro would be looking at both sets, and it would take even longer. So it's important, if you are going to work in sets, to remember, turn off the, for the, the sets you don't want to factor into the equation. And to do that, just click on the left column. It toggles, just clicking in and on. Another cool thing is you can actually save these um, palettes. So what I'm actually going to work on doing is, I, what I'd like to do is I want to give you guys, I want to post some, I'm actually working on this right now. Um, this image, well actually technically um, the image over here with the layers, I want to get that online so you guys can practice on your own. This is my image, so I own the license to it. It's not, I have no problem giving it away. But if we go back to Mask Pro, one of the cool things that you can do is, so for me, for instance, as an educator, if I'm going to be using this image a lot, what I can do is I can actually save my workspace. And what saving the workspace does is it actually saves these sets of colors. So I don't need to, let's say tomorrow, or next time, if I really want to speed through this, or if, uh, you know, I want to uh, demo this over and over, instead of me having to go through each time and selecting my keep and drop colors, if I save this workspace with these keep and drop colors, I can go to File, Load, I can load the workspace, and it'll automatically bring up the colors that I selected. And then all I need to do is go to my magic brush and start drawing. So 
that's another function in Mask Pro that you can do that I don't think gets a lot of airtime. Is if you're going to be working on an image, or if you're going to be working on a series of images. So let's say I took like four or five different images here. Let's say I took I was standing right here on this beach. I took this landscape shot, and then the next image is a portrait shot, except it's just of um, let's close this. You know, it, I, I took a shot like uh, like this. You know, just of that, and I crop it. Well, it still has the same colors. All I would need to do is go into Mask Pro, load my workspace, and then just start drawing the mask out. So that's kind of a cool little function. Um, you, there's a question of whether you, to, you need to use smart objects to save the sets of colors. No, uh, that's a function within Mask Pro. Uh, it, 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 um, it'll automatically save it for you in Mask Pro. <clears throat> so let me just, I might just forego the, yeah, we're almost at the end, so what I'd like to do is just let me look at some of the questions we have here, and then I'll wrap things up. I'm actually pleasantly surprised that we were able to, to go through the hour with just two images, because there is a lot to masking, and I hope that I went at a pace and a cadence that was um, helpful for everyone out there. It's, it's really important to me that you guys understand this, so that we can build on it. The next uh, series, I'll do this particular series a few times in February. I think I'm doing it at least one more time. But then in March, we can move on to the intermediate. We'll have different images that are even more complex, and we'll use different tools in Mask Pro. Um, all right, let me look. Uh, and you're most welcome, Jane and Kathy. I'm glad that this slower approach is helpful. Uh, that that make, means a lot to me. Um, does Mask Pro work on scanned 16-bit black and white images? Absolutely, except you will have a very tough time. Picture this, if this was a black and white image. Um, image, mode, grayscale. Oops. Uh, don't flatten. Discard. Okay, black and white image. I'm not going to lie to you, it's going to be harder. Um, you can do things to the image to make it easier to make your selection. So let me just... Um, stamp this image and let's go to an adjustment layer. We'll go to adjustments and we'll go to um, brightness contrast. So we can kind of boost the contrast. You remember earlier I kind of made a, a little quip about faking the color? This is what I mean by faking color. I'm actually just changing the dynamics so that I can go into Mask Pro. I'm not actually affecting my image. Here's my original image, the black and white, but with an adjustment layer I can actually fake the color temporarily. I can kind of boost the brightness and the contrast, making more of a distinction between keep and drop. So I'm, I'm worried. I don't want to get too ahead of myself. But these are some of the things in black and white that you would have to do to make a, a good mask. Um, let me see here. So white is often gray is on. Uh, Jane. So yeah, basically if we zoom in here to our mask. Let me just wait for the screen to catch up. Okay, here's our mask. Anything that's black is... Oh, let me move the big finger. Um, anything that's black will reveal the layer under it. Anything that's white will hide, the, will show the original layer. Anything that's gray is kind of a transition and you don't really, especially along the edge. So let me let me uh, go back out, and let me go back to the color image. I'll go to history, um, select. Okay, especially along the edge of the image, you do not want you want to minimize the gray. The gray will actually show. It, it's kind of like a, a, a an opacity slider. Black will be a hundred percent, white will be zero percent, and gray will be a transition. You really don't want any transition. You want what you want the original layer showing, and you want um, the sky showing where the sky should be. Having gray kind of gives you a, a little bit of a dirty bleed through. So hopefully that helps. Um, let me see if there. So uh, no, there's a question of whether Mask Pro can handle something like replacing the sky and the water here. No, uh, I don't. Not that I know of. 
um, when we have, whenever we do our our demos of Mask Pro where there is reflective qualities, we do exactly what I showed you. We'll go in, back into Photoshop here um, after we create our complex mask, and then we'll just kind of at a very low opacity paint in the water on the same mask that we created. So that's kind of how we handle it. Um, let me um, go back to two markers in a second. Uh, let me see here. There's a question about, we'll go back to Mask Pro right now. Um, there's a question about two of the tools. I want to see which ones are being, uh, maybe I can talk to them a little bit. These highlighter tools. Um, I kind of don't want to. I don't want to spend time with the highlighter tools right now because um, it'll it won't fit for this image here. Um, but really, the best thing to do is go to the Mask Pro Help in um, in each product. We have a user guide, and so we'll go through it, you know, and explain what each uh, tool does. I don't want to go through and give you a textbook definition. You can see here what the keep and drop highlighters are. It tells you the the, um, the definition of it, but I prefer actually illustrating visually. So we'll do that for the intermediate. Um, there's another question. There were a few questions here about how to use um, Mask Pro to create selections so that we can use focal point. That will definitely be something that we can do in um, I mean, we can try it. Let's try it with this one. If if you guys want to stick on the line, let's um. Let's uh. Hmm. Okay, let's stamp this image. Oops. Now with this image, let's go into Mask Pro. I'm going to try something here. I don't know if this this is totally going to be. If this fails, you never saw it happen. All right. Here's Mask Pro. Where are my um, tools? Tools, drop colors, keep colors. Okay, um, let's start with just new sets of colors. We'll turn the other ones off. Okay, turn that one off and start with a new set. All right. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Scratch that. Let's go to Mask Pro and then Mask Pro select. I worry that I'm gonna I'm throwing too much at you right now, but if uh, if you guys are interested in this, let's do it really quickly. We'll go to window, zoom window. The difference between Mask Pro and Mask Pro Select. Mask Pro Select is all about creating a selection. It's not about removing. So, let's say here. I don't know if this will work, but let's just try it. Let's just try it. Um, We'll go to our second set of keep and drop colors and we'll go to our magic brush and we will start drawing here. I don't know how well this will work. Now you notice that it's not, it's drawing this kind of weird uh, yellowy gross color, but that's fine. All right, we're just drawing the same exact stuff. So the second set of colors I use for down here, make sure that I get everything. Okay. Now we'll go turn off our second set of colors and we'll turn our first set of colors back on because that's what I use for the top portion of this image. So let's go here and draw. And you can see it, you can notice how there's a little bit of a lag. That's because we in the first set of colors we had more colors selected. So I'm just drawing an outline. And going through I wonder if this will work. This might work, but it might be a good uh, a good example. And this is what I'm going to cover in the intermediate, so you're kind of getting a sneak preview, if anything. Now that I have that selection, I'm just going to outline what I just did. I'm actually really interested to see. I didn't test it on this image, so this could work. It couldn't, or it could blow up in our faces. Now we'll fill that in. Okay. Now let's go to File, Save, Apply. Let's see what it does. Okay, I don't know if you can see what happened, but what we did with Mask Pro was we created a selection. Right now, basically, everything that's selected is what we um, masked out and with some remnants, but we've got our foreground selected. 
what we can do now is we can go with our selection intim focal point, which allows you to change the focus of uh, your image or the point of focus of your image. And let's see if it does anything. Let's bring the, the, the amount up. Okay, and this actually does kind of work. What it's doing is, oh, we did the opposite. <laughs> um, let's cancel out of here for a second. We'll go to invert our selection. So now we're selecting everything except for the buildings. Let's go back into focal point. Okay, so you're seeing now that our because we selected the sky, so we used Mask Pro to create a complex selection of the building and the foreground. Then we inverted it, so everything except for the building and the foreground are selected, meaning the sky. What this allows me to do is go into focal point and protect the building. So the building will always be in perfect focus, but the sky now gets rendered into this nice kind of out of focus area. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. That is a we're definitely getting um, ahead of ourselves. And Peter asks a question: Why not just select the mask that I already made? Absolutely could have, but I wanted to illustrate. If I cancel out of here, what I wanted to illustrate is this: If you single click on Mask Pro, there are three options. We went into this third option. Instead of using Mask Pro to create a mask, we used Mask Pro to create a selection. So yeah, we could have gone to the mask and selected it. Absolutely. Um, so I hope that wasn't that was definitely very heady, um, but I'm glad that it kind of worked in a in a kind of a weird way. You know, we we kind of had some rough selections over here, which let's pretend we didn't see that. But um, that's how you can use Mask Pro, and that will be in the uh, intermediate slash advanced um, series next month. Let me see if there are a few quick questions, and then we'll end it up because we're we're exceeding our time, which I don't mind. This is what I do, but I don't want to get anyone in trouble if you have to run somewhere. Um, um, does the chisel tool offer any advantage over Photoshop's refine mask for the edges? The problem with the refine edge is that you have to get your selection in one swoop. You can't just keep refining the edge. So the chisel tool is nice because it it, just, it has a very smart algorithm to detect edges. So if you want to make a transition, and I didn't use it on this image because I didn't think it needed it, but if you want to blend the edge, let me deselect this. If you want to blend the edge, the chisel tool does a really nice job rather than using the refine edge or even using a quick select. Um, where's my quick select? This kind of, you know, this doesn't do a very good job. A lot of times if you hit delete, um, it um it you kind of it looks like you've chopped off edges and I would have to refine this uh, more but that's kind of the point I I prefer the chisel tool. This session will absolutely be available on iTunes and streaming, uh, probably by Monday or Tuesday of next week. All right, what I'm going to do is. Oh, here's actually a good, is there a way to delete the whole color sets? That's actually a very good question. This is a great question. What we're going to do is we'll go into Mask Pro really quickly, and the question is, can I delete an entire set of colors? Absolutely. You can delete an entire set, or you can delete an inv individual color. So let's zoom in right here, and I'll show you. So let's say up here, I don't want this dark color in my keep color set. I can take it and drag it to the trash bin, and it goes away. Let's say I want to get rid of the entire set itself. I can drag from here and delete the set. Again, I was dragging from the set itself. There's another thing you can do. Let's say, so I've got two color sets here, and I want to get rid of the whole thing at once. If I click on Alt or op so Option on, on the Mac, Alt on the PC, and I click on the trash bin, it deletes the entire thing, everything that's in there. So that's a quick way to, to just gr get rid of everything and dump it out. So that is a that's how you can get rid of um, those colors.